In today's how-to video, I'm going to show you how to make our latest pattern, the bend and snap clutch. Now I call it a clutch, but you've got four different wear styles available with it. So you've got your standard crossbody, but if that's not your style and you want to remove that crossbody strap, you do have a top carrying handle right here along the top there, or you can just carry it clutch style. And even in the instructions, I do explain how to add, a, and, add and make a wristlet strap. So you can just add it like this, put it on your arm. As far as its features go, this front pocket is a nice size for your phone. I can fit my 8 Plus in that front pocket. And on the inside, you have two additional pockets that go the full length of this bottom. So I tend to use the one size for my essentials, like a purse, and then this one I'll have kind of an extension of my wallet. It can hold six card slots, six cards, and then you got your, I'll put my cash or my coins in there. And it's all held securely with a couple of magnetic snaps. So let's just jump right into it. Jumping right in, let's just get started. Um, right now you're gonna wanna take the opportunity to interface your pocket liners if you're using a quilter's cotton. This is canvas, so I've not interfaced it. Um, but I am going to use this canvas for the exterior portion of the bag. So I did add fusible fleeks where I cut out um, around the edges to keep it out of the seam allowance. But the inside does have to be a non-fraying material, so I'm sticking with leather for the inside of that. Um, I am wanting to use a really thin strip of fabric for the card slot. So I picked a different fabric other than canvas because it'll get pretty bulky as you're fan folding. So this is a very lightweight cotton that I have pinked the edges using some pinking shears so that help with the, the fraying. And then when you take your pattern piece, you wanna make sure to go ahead and cut out the zipper boxes and punch the holes for the magnetic snap and the uh, snap placement so that we can easily transfer these markings onto um, the interior piece of our clutch here. So then the next step will be we'll want to mark all of the centers on each of our pattern pieces, including the center of the zippers and the pocket liners. If you are going to leave the edges raw, not paint them or anything like that, that's strictly up to you and our personal preference. I'm going to add just a, one layer of an edge coat of paint and I find that this is kind of floppy to start so it's easiest if you add a piece of the double-sided tape to the back and it makes it stiffer to at least do a quick coat of that. Um, also in the instructions if you've made our slim sling or our pocket pal I have you not cut out the snap placement uh, closure piece yet because we're going to cut them down to size as one for the cleanest edges so I'm going to start with gluing these together and getting that going and then edge painting anything that I want covered. Okay, so I just added center markings to this and taking the interior main body piece, I do like to flip it over where I can trace on my zipper boxes with this removable Tandy leather pen. Um, it's a silver pen, so if I touch it, it can kind of smear a little bit. So I would prefer to put this on the back side versus the front, but everything else for the magnetic snap placement and then the snap closure placement, I'm gonna flip it back over and um, mark the front of it. All right, so I got my zipper boxes on the back, flip it back over, and then go ahead and put it back in place. And then I'm gonna mark my four magnetic snap closures on here, including the snap placement. Then while I have this, I'm gonna go ahead and clip it in place using a ruler and my leather hole punch. I'm gonna punch these holes on the edges. 
and then take my sharp box cutter and cut each individual line, including the smaller line up top here while it's clipped in place. just punched the holes. I do find that if I punch the holes first, then cut the lines, it's easiest to put the pointy part of my box cutter right in the hole and then draw that straight line. What I did not cut are the zipper boxes. If you cut the zipper boxes now, it becomes a really floppy piece and it's very difficult to work with when you go to install your card slots. So now that these transfer markings have already been placed, we're gonna go ahead and go back to our snap closure. Right now, I've glued the two pieces wrong sides together and then I'm gonna go ahead and trim it down to size. But by cutting each piece as one, you get such a nice clean edge here versus just kind of like a wobbly edge on the other side. And then after this is when I will take the time to go ahead and edge paint the sides. All right, so I've just added one layer of uh, paint to the snap closure piece and then I propped it up on a couple of wonder clips to give it off my work surface so it can dry. I will end up putting another coat for a smoother edge. Next, we're gonna go ahead and prepare our bag strap and our carrying handle. And then in the bonus section is a wristlet strap option. So you're gonna cut it to length and then either you can eyeball it and put the tape down the center of your strip or you can get out your ruler and then mark the strip. But I'm using quarter inch double-sided tape and I'm gonna run it right down the center of this and then fold each raw edge into the center, butting up those edges together the whole length of all three of these straps. All right, so now we have the right side of the strap and the wrong side, and I'm gonna put it under my foot with the wrong side up so that I can sew just lateral to the seam down the center. I'm gonna do that. Um, I have the walking foot that I'm using for this leather. So I go down one side and up the other. However, if you don't have a walking foot, you may wanna just go down one side and then start back up and go down the other side. So you're going in the same direction so you don't get any pulling on your strap and make it twist. All right, so I've sewed up my straps, and then I just like to go ahead and just make sure those edges are right, real nice and even. This is the carrying handle, so I will just lightly add a, a layer of paint to that. Um, sometimes I do to these straps, sometimes I don't because it's hidden with hardware and I don't worry about it too much. But we're gonna start with the um, wristlet strap. So you take your um, 5 8 inch swivel, snap hook, fold over a little edge there, and then you line them up this way. We're gonna punch a hole. And go through all those layers. Um, you can either sew across that or use a rivet. You know what? I want to be. I want to use a medium-sized rivet. It's always recommended that you keep multiple sizes on hand depending on your material. So this one, the post didn't quite go through. I need it to go all the way through so that I can see the end of the cap or the post, so that my cap can go on and I can feel it click in place. If I can't feel that click, the post is not long enough. So then I'm just gonna set it with my hand press here. So that is our wristlet handle. 
Now for our body strap, again, I'm gonna trim those edges real nice and even. You're gonna take your strap adjuster and you're going to loop it around the center and punch a hole. So this one, I'm gonna go, it's only going through two layers, so I am gonna choose the smaller rivet. Push it through your hole. Make sure you can feel the cap snap in place. There you go. All right, so then take the loose end and put one of your other swivel clasps on. And you're gonna come back up and over. And there you go. So now this will make it a removable, adjustable bag strap. And just add on our other swivel clasp and rivet it. Which I lost it. Punch that hole. Just your rivet through. And of course you have to set it all. So there's our adjustable crossbody and our wristlet. And we're not gonna do anything with this yet, but I am going to add the, the rivets holes. and actually punch those holes. But we won't use this bag handle strap until the very end. Go ahead and punch those holes. So the last part is we're going to go ahead and finish sewing up the uh, snap closure piece and then adding the hardware to that piece. All right, for this next part, I'm going to set my spring snap on my closure flat piece. So I've punched my hole and I'm going to take the pretty side of my spring snap and that's going to be the exterior. Now it's real important right now I'm sitting on my floor because I need a hard surface to set my snaps. Um, in order for it to set properly. If you try and set this snap on your bouncy workstation, it's gonna set wonky, wonky and it will not set right and you're gonna get frustrated that your snaps don't work. So either you take it down to the hardest level, which is my floor, or you can get those little quartz or granite slabs to put on your work surface. But anyways, pretty side of the snap goes on the outside of the flap. We're gonna take this piece that's flat side. You'll notice there's two sides. This will be for when we install the other portion of the snap. Right now I'm gonna take the flat side up and put my snap down, grab my tool that this came with and then add the female portion of the snap here. So I have to insert that right into the hole here and give it a couple whacks with my hammer. There we go. There we go. So the next part is we're gonna go ahead and install our card slot. So I've flipped it to the back side of the interior main and I've cut 13 strips of this double-sided tape and I'm gonna apply them to the back. So first off, we'll go right below each cut slit. And then we cut a little, the strap closure piece up here. We're gonna go um, a couple inches above that. And then we're gonna add the very bottom piece, which is where we're gonna start our pockets. So right there. So you'll notice I did cut my snap placement because I wanna put the 
the um, card slot fabric in first and then add this the slot or the snap later so that I can press it with my iron and get it as, as flat as possible. So to start with this, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the first piece of tape just below the first cut slit. And with the right side facing down, this one you can't really tell, but if it's a printed fabric, it would be right side facing down, going up. I'm gonna lay that bottom edge into that tape and press well with my fingers here. Then we're gonna go to the machine and I'm gonna sew this first layer going right below that, right below the line and sew front to back. Um, not back stitching, I wanna pull my threads to the back. All right, let's go do that. All right, so I'm ready to go ahead and start sewing the card slots and I just wanna bring your attention. You're gonna to wanna to have your, your ruler, a small ruler handy that'll show a half inch mark your lighter and then your snips. And then I brought the five extra pieces of double-sided tape to keep handy here. So this first couple slots I will do slow so that you can see, and then we're gonna go ahead and speed it up to conserve our time here. So with the strip going up and away, I'm gonna start sewing this very bottom row. I'm not gonna uh, backstitch on either end. I'm gonna pull my threads to the back. Tie them off. This just gives it a cleaner look on the front, and my preference. I'm using bonded nylon thread for this. So I can singe it. If you're just using regular standard thread, go ahead and use some fray check. I'm gonna do that after each row of stitching. So now I'm gonna go ahead and peel off this bottom row of tape here, and then do my best to kind of pull it nice and tight, giving it a good finger press right up here, and press it in nicely into that tape. Now I gotta peel off the next row. I've left all the backings on, obviously, so that it's not sticking to my machine as I sew these card slots. So then give it a good tug, make it nice and smooth, and press it into that tape. We're gonna go ahead and repeat that process, taking it under our machine here. Lay your card slots nice and smooth. All right, so even though we've sewn two rows from the front view, we've only created our first card pocket. To make this a usable second pocket, we have to measure up from this bottom edge, the bottom fold, a half inch. And that's why we have our tape handy. We'll lay that right on top of that and repeat the process. So we pull our strip back down, give this top a finger press, lay it right down on top, press it into the tape. And we remove this next row. Go back up, finger press, and tape. There's our second card slot. So now I'm just gonna speed things up as we continue to finish the rest of them. And be sure that once you do this bottom one, um, you have to create that last card slot. So don't automatically 
put it up here, otherwise you'll sew across it and you'll have no hole. All right. I've made a bunch of card slots before, but you, I've still messed it up. So before moving on and doing all of your card slot, always double check that you have your measurements correct, that these first two do fit right before moving forward. So let's finish up these card slots. As I was mentioning before, I just sewed the bottom row of this, the last pocket, but I've not created my pocket yet. So if I go and try and stick it into that last tape, I don't have a pocket, okay? So you do have to create one last row, and I know that because I still have a piece of tape left. So if you've got a long tail still left over and a piece of tape, you're not done. So just FYI, for any of them, the Slim Sling and the Pocket Pill, I've, I've noticed people say that they, they did their card slots wrong or they got frustrated because they couldn't use the top one because you think you're done, but you're not. I'm not doing any more sewing for the card slots, but I still have to create this last loop. So then you pull it to the top and you should end up with just enough of your strip. So I can cut this remainder off and I'm gonna go ahead and put a pressing cloth over this and give it a nice press with my iron so that it lays as flat as possible and our card slots are done. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and set our snap here. So we have to just go through the gap that we've left with our um, card slots here. And there's a longer post and a shorter post. It's the long post that's going in through here. And I didn't install this first because I wouldn't have really been able to get a good press with my iron or I'm fighting the snap as I'm trying to lay it smooth. That's the ribbon method. So um, then you're just gonna install it using this bump out part underneath here. So I have to push that in there, set it with my hammer, but I do have to take it to the floor. So I'll do that in just a moment. Then we're gonna go ahead and snap this in place and put the end, the other raw end of our snap piece in through this hole. Line it up, snap it in place, and then we're gonna just sew it across. You could feel there's a, a good amount still left in there. So I've snapped this in place so it nice lays flat. Mm -hmm. And then doing the same method as with the card slots, I'm not back stitching, just gonna sew right along that edge. threads to the back, tie them off. And then this also just kind of secures, I mean, it's secured in that tape, but it also keeps the uh, card slots in place. So I'll continue to tie that off and singe it and pull that through and this part will be done. Okay, so I like to, again, verify that I did it right before I move on and complete my bag and this is jacked up. So fits good, we're good with that. Now we're gonna go ahead and work on our little ID window. I still have the tape on from when I painted it, which gave it some stability. Um, and you're gonna grab your piece of plastic. I happen to cut out a hole in the center because I have a hole punch, but you don't have to go out and buy a separate tool to do that. It's just something that I'm, I'm doing for this. And I'm gonna lay it down centered on the back. You'll notice it is a little bit smaller than the exterior piece. So if you can remove just a piece at a time, it will be helpful to lay down your plastic because otherwise your plastic, once it touches something, it does not want to move. And then trying to get your plastic centered on your leather is very difficult and it ends up being wonky. Ask me how I know. Okay. There we go. So this is, um, determine which one's your top and which one's your bottom, because we're gonna have to sew a row real close to the edge, across here, and then just below it, outside um, the top of this box, and pull the threads to the back and tie them off. But only do this top row for now. Right, 
So next step is we're gonna go ahead and attach it to the interior main piece. When we go to sew our two rows of stitching creating our card box, try not to get terribly close to the window. Give yourself a, a wiggle room on the side because it is meant to be a snug fit so your idea isn't sliding around in there. So go at least an eighth inch from each edge. Now, um, ordinarily we would have our zipper box markings on here, but I chose to do it on the back because this can smear. So I just placed my pattern piece back on top and put a little marking there because we're gonna lay this down uh, three quarters inch down from that line and centered. So I'm gonna have to add more tape to the back of this. If you want to um, cut it down so it's not as thick, if you're worried about gumming your, your needle. Um, I'm using Wawak tape, which can gum a domestic machine needle. I find the Tandy leather double tape is better for those domestic machines. But because I'm putting this in the very center of this ID window, I won't necessarily go through it with my needle on this. So I'm not terribly worried about how much tape is on the back of this. But if you find that it's gumming your needle, I would recommend doing the um, Tandy Leather brand. So now I'm gonna peel this off. And position it centered on this bottom edge. So I'm, I'm like I said, I placed my marking there. And then lay that down. Go ahead and verify that it is even on both sides with your ruler. Three and an eighth, three and an eighth. So now I'm gonna start here, go down the edge, across the bottom, back up, and then I'm gonna go back a couple stitches into those previous stitches, come back down this edge, go across the bottom, back this edge, and then end it going across into those same stitches and then tie it off on the back. So we just did our stitching, verifying placement. It's a nice snug fit, but it fits beautifully. And that's why I cut a hole just to make it easier, but you could still easily grab it this way. Now I like bag bling, so what I'm gonna go do is punch holes in all these corners so that I can add rivets. But the stitching is perfectly secure. This is just decorative, just something I like to do. So I'm gonna do that right now, and then we're gonna add our Magnetic snap. Now, using our magnetic snap placement markings, I'm going to take one of the washers to our magnetic snap and mark the slit lines on each side and cut those. Now, these are 14 millimeter snaps and they're thin, so they have a really thin profile, which I really like. We're gonna put the male portion up top and the female portion on the bottom. So female meaning the little hole. I'm gonna push this through. Now I'm going through leather and I will go through a washer as well. So I'm not adding any extra Peltex back here or a thicker stabilizer, but if that makes you more comfortable, by all means. Do it, or if you're using maybe not as strong as a material, then you put your washer on, and I'm pushing these towards the center, and I'm gonna give them a little hammer to get them down, just like that. And then I like to take a piece of duct tape and just put it over place. So I'm gonna do that with the rest of the three corners. I realize it's kind of hard to see my box, but now I'm gonna go ahead and cut out those zipper boxes now that this stuff is done. I'm telling you, with two holes here, trying to get this going, it was so floppy and gets caught on everything. But if it makes you more comfortable to cut those out before you do all this hard work, potentially ruining this, by all means, do that first. Um, but I'm gonna take my box cutter and um, straight ruler and go ahead and cut out my box. All right, so zipper boxes are cut. But now look, when you go to lift this up, see how it's just really floppy? It's very difficult to work with with those holes. So that's why I just save it for this step because I just don't need the hassle. Now I'm gonna apply some double-sided tape to the top and bottom edges of these zipper boxes. 
and we're gonna go create our zippers using the zip we're gonna attach the zippers to the liners first so we're gonna set this aside as soon as I'm done with this and grab the lining of the pockets and the three zippers so this is the exterior zipper and pocket liners and then these are two interior pocket liners so I'm lining them up with their center markings here and their zippers so with this face up, I'm gonna center the zipper on a zipper liner, and we're gonna use a fourth inch seam allowance because this is number five zipper. So we're gonna go a quarter inch from the edge and base these in place. We're gonna just kind of do it like a production style. So I'm just gonna run right along and grab the next liner since all the zippers are gonna be installed the same way. face up on top of our lining face up And we're gonna flip, we're gonna repeat it with this, the opposite liner piece. So find the center, we want the zipper face up and the lining face up. So we have to flip it this way. And I usually just line up the edges or that center marking and do the exact same thing on the opposite side of the zippers. Zipper face up, lining face up, centered. Last one, lining face up. Zipper face up, centered. All right, so last step with this part is I'm gonna um, Open them up on my um, pressing board here and press this flat on all three of these linings so that it lays as flat as possible. Okay, now that these are all pressed open and finished, I'm gonna put the exterior zipper off to the side and work with one of these. So with the zipper pull going to the left, I'm gonna take my interior main and center it right over the zipper and remove those tapes and get it just how I like. I just wanna point out to you that on your zipper tape, there is rows of stitching on there. So right here is where I'm gonna line up the bottom of my zipper box along the entire bottom. And same thing up here, cause that gap there is a half inch and our zipper box is a half inch. So pulling off just the bottom edge of the tape allows me to position it 
carefully that way. If I pull off both pieces of tape and it sticks, it's so hard to get it positioned just so. So you're just dealing with one layer of sticky tape makes this kind of difficult, but by just doing the bottom edge first, it makes it way easier to at least get it positioned right along that, that seam in the tape I was telling you about. And once you get it how you like it, it looks like you're not, your tape's not wavy or anything and it's following that same line. Then we're gonna push all of the material to the top and out of the way, so it's flat here. And we're just gonna do a row of stitching from here to here, pull the threads off and tie. I just put my needle down in position and I pull both lining pieces up and away so there's nothing down here. I'm just gonna sew along this bottom edge and stop. Pull my threads to the back and tie off. So the bottom edge and the linings were pulled to the other side. Now we're gonna actually pull the linings down so they're both going this way. And then where I left off, I'll put my needle down here, go around the top of the box, and end up right here, pull it back and tie it off. So our first zipper is installed. You got some nice clean edges. You're not seeing any raw zipper tape there. And you'll notice that one of the liners is a half inch longer than the other, which is what we expect. Right now, in the meantime, we're just gonna clip these liners out of the way. So we can repeat this exact same process with this zipper. Zipper pull to the left and do the same exact thing. Now we have two usable pockets. We just have to um, trim off the excess liner, clip it all as one, and then we're just gonna baste around the entire perimeter to make them actual usable pockets. And it goes the full length of the clutch. The interior main we're going to move to the exterior main so we've got our zipper facing here and instead of using the quarter inch tape I'd like to cut this in half to make it an eighth inch wide because we really don't want to take much space from here but we're going to apply it to the very top edge of this zipper facing on the top edge and the bottom edge so this is the only thing that differs from how we're going to install this zipper from the interior zippers is we're going to first attach a facing. So per the instructions, you're going to find your landmark on the front and place the center of your facing, which I made a teeny tiny mark right there. That's my center. And then I've already added my center marking right onto my fabric. Line those two up, making sure it's pretty straight. And if you wanna verify that it is centered on each side, go for it. So now we're gonna to go to the machine and we're gonna only sew around the outer rim of this box, getting as close to the edge as possible. Don't backstitch, pull the threads to the back off, to the back and tie off. So now I gotta cut a slit down the center here so that I can cut away this excess fabric underneath this facing. Be very, very careful not to actually cut your facing, but to just cut within it, following your stitching line. Really small snips if you need to, to be extra careful. Okay. So 
Now that that's gone, got a little bit more of this if I can get at it. All right, so now I'm gonna add a row of tape to this inner edge. And now we're essentially doing the same zipper install as we did on the interior portion. Adding the tape to the top and bottom of the zipper box. We're gonna remove just the bottom row and we're gonna center it over our zipper lining following the little row of tape. And then once we get it positioned the way we want it, sew the bottom row with everything pushed up and then finish it with everything pushed down, literally the same way as how we just right. did it. We're not gonna um, baste it to the sides. As you can see, it's much shorter than the sides, but you do have the one liner being longer than the other. So we're gonna trim that up so they're equal. And then we're just gonna go ahead and press these edges back a half inch. And repeat with the other side, making them even, just like so. Now I just kind of clip them so that they can stay that way, but I need to close up the side pocket. So at my machine, I'm gonna pull the leather or the exterior portion out and away. And so as close to this part on both sides. Get as close as both as possible on both sides. Just like the inner pockets, you have no raw zipper tape. I did add some decorative ribbons. Feel free to do that if you'd like, not necessary. But make sure you open your zipper. This is how we're gonna turn our clutch right side out. So then taking the card slot part to the bottom and the ID slot to the top, we're gonna clip in place matching all of those center notches. And then using a half inch seam allowance, we're gonna sew around the perimeter, trim it down to a quarter inch, notch our corners and turn it right side out. Okay, so I've just turned it all right side out through that pocket. I've even taken a hammer, especially if there's um, le leather, due to the thickness on these seams, I'll hammer them down being very careful around the magnetic snap. So go ahead and close it up. We're not doing any top stitching on this because we do want to have a 3D effect when the pocket is full. And so now you're gonna take it while it's in the folded position and grab your carrying strap handle and put it right smack dab on the top and then take your marking tool. We've already punched those holes. So now I'm just going to mark where I need to place more holes through the entire um, body piece. Got my markings there, then I'll open it back up. And then seeing my markings, I'm going to take my hole punch and punch those holes through all layers. On both sides here. Now I am going to grab my D rings and thread them right into the center of that and push a couple of rivets through that, those holes. I'm gonna repeat. Actually, you know what? That's that's the wrong side. You can see my seam. We want the seam down. Pay attention to that. <laughs> Don't make my mistake. So you thread it through and then you're gonna push them through the holes you just created with the D ring in between the two rivets. Sometimes you might have to punch a better hole. I don't think it went through all layers. Let me just do that again. Okay. 
Make sure you fit a cap on. Make sure the D-ring's still through in the middle of those. And push the other D-ring through this hole. And repeat with this side. Last one, thread it through, find your hole, push it through, and then grab my little hand press and set that strap. Push the D-ring out of the way, and do both sides. So aside from closing up the inner pocket, the turn hole, our clutch is done. So we've got a little carrying strap this way where you go ahead and add your crossbody strap or your wristlet strap, whatever suits your fancy. And you now have a super cute multifunctional purse. <laughs>